let's get straight into it, shall we? The new album, Resurrection Day, is out now. Um, I have to get this out of the way immediately. It's incredible. It's one of my favorite albums of the year already. Really? I've been trying to listen to other albums to write reviews on them, and I have to keep stopping because it's not Resurrection Day, so I have to go back to Resurrection Day. (laughs) (laughs) You're kidding me. (laughs) Honestly, I love this album. It's so bloody good. It's it's metal the way metal should be. You know, it's it's incredible. (laughs) Whoa, yeah, nice words. Thank you. (laughs) No, you're very welcome. Nice work. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Okay, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, obviously, this is the first album with the, the new lineup. You now have Stefan, and uh, I'm assuming his name is pronounced Jean. Jean. He's, uh, Jean. They call him Jean. Whatever. <laughs> I told you, my Deutschland. But uh, it's, it's not a German name, actually. It's a, I don't know, maybe a French name or so. Yeah. And of course, he, is, he comes here from my area. I don't know why his father called him Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's also not uh, not French, or so he's, so he's a true German. <laughs> it's a, it's not a normal name here, you know. I'm not, no. I'm not the, like everybody would be named, you know. Yeah. However, sounds nice, and he's a nice guy. <laughs> good, good, good. That's the most important thing. <laughs> yeah, and he's very clearly a talented guitarist as well as is Stefan, yes. um, because I say the four of you together have created a, a masterpiece of metal. Um, I, I will stop complimenting you at one point, but it might take me a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how was the uh, recording process with this new lineup? Oh, uh, very funny, very productive, very creative, really good, I have to say. Um, it was not, um, well, we couldn't have, could have, couldn't have expected this, you know, because, um, like you said, it's a new lineup and. Um, I never worked with uh, Jean and Stefan before. Uh, I know Stefan since a couple of years. Also Jean, I know um, since a few years, but not um, not like having played with them or so. You know, just knew yeah. them as guys. You know, uh, Stefan used to work for a booking agency as a booker, and uh, Jean, I know from it, he has played with this other band that he usually played in. Uh, few uh, support uh, jobs for um, for my band, you know. So um, I knew he's a good player and a nice guy, but I never worked with him so far, you know. And uh, the most um, I wouldn't say risky thing, but interesting thing was if those if if the both of the guys would uh, collaborate together really well, you know, because you can imagine when you have two guitar players that play equally, you know. Um, if there's no not a competition shit or ego shit going on, you know, among them, and this would have disturbed or killed everything, and then I couldn't have done it, you know. So we <clears throat> gave it a, a short try, but after a few weeks already, it was clear that those guys uh, work together very respectful, very harmonic, you know. And I think the result now it shows, you know, and it, n- nothing changed about this now since one and a half years. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that this is a good match for those guys. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's interesting as well because obviously you have had lineups before where you've had two guitarists. Um, the most recent, well, most recent before this lineup was just with Marcos on guitar, um, which was a solid lineup. Um, I got this, I got to see and interview you in Spain a few years ago, so that was, um, and you were incredible there as well. Um, so that was great, you know, seeing that rage in Spain where you have Spanish guitarists made it that much more special. Yeah, I don't, really, I don't really know why we didn't come up with this uh, uh, four-piece lineup already a while earlier, because uh, in the end uh, we got this idea already was when Marcus was still in the band, you know. He also uh, liked the idea of having a second guitar player next to him. I don't know why we didn't do it already like five years ago or so, you know. Uh, maybe I was so used to uh, work with only one guitar player after 15 years being together with a Russian player that was in the band before, you know. And yeah. this guy refused to have a second guitar next to him, so I didn't really think about it anymore, you know. As okay. you might remember, we had a, I had a um, twin guitar lineup in the 90s, you know, yeah. which... Um, which was a musical orientation for us in the last five years already. Those albums like Black and Mind in the old days. Um, so I remember we played, for example, in 
um, 2015, end of 2015, we played a tour where we just played this album, full album live, and we had a guest guitar player in the band for this, you know, to uh, do the uh, the twin guitar arrangements. And I don't really know why we didn't think about uh, adding a proper second guitar already back then, you know. <laughs> and finally, we got the idea now by the end of 2019, like, okay, we did this album now as a three piece, but for the next album, we try to bring Stefan in the band. And then, unfortunately, last year in April, I think it was April, April. When Marcus finally quitted his job. Um, it showed already before, in, in January already, it became some urgent uh, private problems, you know. I mean, I have to explain, we're still good friends, and I'm still in regular contact with him, but uh, he had to move away from Germany here. He uh, went back to Tenerife Island, which is north of Africa. Yeah. And um, he's. Uh, then first we thought we might be able to do it over the distance, but uh, then it just uh, showed that this is not practically, especially not for him. And, he, and then with a heavy heart, he quitted yeah. the job. Uh, like I, I guess he's the most sad guy about it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we all were not really yeah. happy about this, but I mean, sometimes, uh, let me say like this, sometimes life has different plans with you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I promise him not to, not to, pull his reasons in the public, you know, but um, no, it, it had nothing to do with the band or with the music or so. It was no. still very private, just. However, uh, then we, uh, after he was gone, then and we had Stefan already in the band, then I had, had to replace him with Gene. And uh, yeah, now we are here with his twin guitar lineup. And we were lucky that it worked out so nice. <laughs> No, it's it's, it's uh, from a fan's point of view, it's uh, very nice to hear that you're still friendly with Marcos, because I think you know when you when a fan loves a band and there's a falling out, it's it's almost like your own family. You know, what I mean, it's um, actually not as much as like you. Know, but. Actually, it was a bit like this, you know, the, but um, it's uh, the the distance is way too big for him for him, and and he's he's got uh, problems that um, don't allow him to. Uh, to tour with us or to to yeah to to do what this job demands, you know, and um, he realized that I, I would that he would just um, um, yeah if he would still stay in the band, it would cause serious problems to the whole working process, you know, and then he realized it's uh, time for him to face the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say it like this, you know. However, well. Um... I think I've uh, mentioned before how good the album is, uh, once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> you've uh, uh, you've recorded <laughs> two music videos as well, uh, Virginity and uh, Monetary Gods. Um, these are both really cool videos as well. They're very um, kind of high energy, but not uh, distracting. You know what I mean? You're very much focused on the band and the music. Um, why were these songs chosen as the singles for Resurrection Day? Oh, <laughs> actually, it was it was a quick choice. You know, we were asked like what songs we want to put out as singles before, and it was a pretty quick choice. We could have basically picked nearly every song from the album, yeah. I think, because all the other songs would have also worked. When I um, listen to the stuff now, I think also a new land, for example, would have been a fantastic single choice you know but however we decided to take those two songs <laughs> there was no deeper meaning behind it also <laughs> no you could have just thrown a dart at any name on the album and it would have worked it so. was a decision let's say from the hip you know <laughs> <laughs> no it's uh, it's great you know what i really like about the album one, one of many things is that i think there's what, 13 tracks on the album um, 12. 12, okay. Um, what I really like is that you have, like, obviously you've got the intro track, which is a really cool orchestral piece, and obviously Rage has got that link with classical music anyway through uh, Link with Mortis Orchestra. Um, and then you've got about eight songs of pure metal, and then it starts to get a little bit experimental, you know, like that's I can't remember the name of the song now, but it's kind of like folk metal. Not too yeah, much. Yeah, you traveling through time, you mean, right? That's the one. 
that's the one. And um, and there's some real, like the again, I forget the name of the song after that, but it was like a lot more kind of dark and creepier than Black Room. Yes, <laughs> yeah, those those songs are a bit special, but uh, also in the in the focus of the rich sound trademarks, I would say. Yeah, so so it's great, you know. That in one way, the rage is with this album has completely satisfied that craving for heavy metal or speed metal, whatever you want to call it. But it still has room to grow and room to experiment and room to do this, that, and the other. And it works. It works. It doesn't feel out of place with the other song. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for yeah for saying that. You know, <laughs> it right. shows to me that we didn't do any everything wrong. As <laughs> a few hits, <laughs> a few things we did right. <laughs> and something else uh, to really get excited about with the album is the artwork. The artwork's so cool. Um, yeah, this is, it's a guy from France. Okay. Um, 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 Stan Decker is his name, and he, uh, you know. He works for plenty of bands already since years. I remember he also did something for Megadeth or for Our Maiden or bands like this. And uh, also for us, he did, it's already the second work he does for us. Also the album before Resurrection Day was, the cover was done by him. And um, yeah, I think he topped his thing from last year, <laughs> from the <laughs> last album. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's great. It's all those like classic, um, but there's no mistaking looking at it that it's a metal album. You know, it's um, it's just. Yeah, I, mean, I it's finally cool. understood that the metal fans want to have this kind of stylistic thing, you know, and <laughs> that it just fits best with his music, probably. <laughs> yeah, it does. And um, well, obviously, Ray just had like all manner of artwork over the years, and some of it's been really cool. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say any of it's been bad, but you know, all, think, the, all, all of these years, I was never really too much into this optical thing, you know, uh, yeah. maybe uh, it's not the way how I think or so, you know, and I too often I would have to, I have to say I let other people decide this, you know, and um, I think it was not for the better, you know, <laughs> like too, too many cooks are spitting in the soup, you know, yeah. uh, now finally I realized that this should be um, uh, more fitting to the music and now I I'm gonna have a bit more of a hand on, on the whole thing, you know. Like, <laughs> you understand? No, it, it does it because the music has that kind of firepower um, energy to it. Not the Judas Priest album, um, which itself is great, but um, it, it has that real powerful but fast energy. And again, it's reflected on the by the creature on the artwork, you know. So, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound Chase is a good example of that as well. Actually, um, Wings of Rage, Winds of Rage, was a really good art, art piece as well. Um, <laughs> um, obviously, speaking of Winds of Rage, since that album, you've been back with um, SPV Records um, after a long time with Nuclear Blast. Why was the the, the decision to leave Nuclear Blast and return to well, it has nothing to do with the uh, with the label themselves. Also, you know, it was more a personal decision of the people. You know, when when you work with the label, basically you work with people. <clears throat> and uh, back then, when we left uh, SBV, was uh, when was it two thousand and five or six or so? Um, they had major changes in their structure. You know. Um, so we thought it might be better to to switch to nuclear blast, you know, because uh, on both labels I have one person that I trust really very much. You know, it's uh, on SPV, it's Oli Hahn, uh, the label manager and AONA for us. And um, nuclear blast, it was Andy Ziri, uh, the guy who's now managing Paul Wolf, for example. You know, he and he left uh, two years ago. He left uh, nuclear blast, and um, so I also thought. And I go back to Ollie, you know, and let the, him work for us, you know. Yeah. Plus, uh, they just offered, made a better offer, you know. <laughs> These are just <laughs> business decisions, you know, but it has nothing to do with the quality of the label or with the people that work in general, you know. I think uh, uh, these labels here uh, in Germany also, AFM or whatever, you know, or Napalm, 
they are all from the quality of their work, they're all equal, you know, and they're all, so it's not really for a band. Um, such a big ideology, uh, ideo, um, ideology. ideology a decision, you know, it's a, it's for me, it was always a decision with uh, what person works for us or, or does uh, uh, the promotion for us, you know, the, the A&R work. <clears throat> so that's the explanation of the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's, it's nice as well that it's, it's, an, it's a matter of a band moving just to feel more at home as opposed to the band having a falling out of a label. I think almost every band has a horror, every German band has a horror story about noise records. So it's nice that that isn't the case with Nuclear Blast. You know. uh, every band has a horror story about whom? Noise records. Is it noise? noise records. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah, noise records. <laughs> Back then in the 80s, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of horror stories. And uh, I agree that um, the boss of the label, Karl Walterbach, then, he was treating the musicians sometimes a bit rude, you know. Okay. Um, but in general, also, you have to see uh, that this label, uh, especially in the 80s, is responsible for building up the German metal scene in a way, you know. So um, yeah. I see it with uh, with two with uh, two faces, you know. And on one hand, of course, there's a lot of mistreatment of the bands or so. But on the other hand, uh, if they weren't, if the noise wouldn't have been there, I don't know how the German metal scene would look like, you know. And I don't know yeah. where we would be, you know, or where I would be. <laughs> so. Everything has two sides. <laughs> oh, yeah. Swings and roundabouts, as we say. In, in, right. Uh, um, obviously, this no, it's not just rage that takes up your time. You have uh, Lingua Mortis Orchestra. Um, there's also uh, Refuge as well. Um, what's the status of these two bands at the moment? Are you looking to do more work with them soon, or just want to focus on rage at the moment? I, at the moment, the f full focus is on rage, and all the other uh, things are put on ice at the moment, you know, which doesn't mean that, of course, we wouldn't do anything anymore in the future. But right now, there's no, not really plans or so. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, speaking of plans, um, what's the plans going forward for Resurrection Day? Um, do you have tour dates lined up? Well, yeah, we have uh, already set up a few dates here for Europe. By, uh, for November, December, which okay. we hope we are able to play because at the moment the situation is really weird over here with all these different district restrictions and laws, you know, yeah. uh, which are changing every few weeks, you know. Uh, there's a lot of bands that just canceled their tours right now and push them in the future. Yeah. I hope we don't have this uh, fate, you know, uh, or this, uh, we can actually play it, you know. And of course, we're we are setting updates for next year already for whatever parts of the world in the hope that <laughs> the pandemic situation gets better and we will be able to play the stuff you know that's all we can do we are actually been doing this already now since one and a half years just putting updates and pushing them again and then again and again in the future you know yeah uh, but one day i think there must be the situation back to normal you know and we can play the stuff you know yeah i think you know we're starting to get um starting to return to some idea of normalcy um, and it'll be great as well because like i say I've, I've, i was lucky enough to see you in spain with Byron a few years ago and um i tell you how uh, intense seeing rage is from this perspective of fan there was these three guys in front of me they were all like these huge skinhead kind of guys like spanish skinheads and with like every old song that you would play not even just the old ones they would go and they'd like nearly cry they were so excited what? to go down or something like that <laughs> really where where was, was this show where was this this was in uh mufia and the garaje b club Murcia, yes yeah, yeah. I remember. yeah. cool <laughs> So if anyone's watching this and they haven't seen Rage before, you might cry like these Spanish skinheads did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Cool. Uh, BB, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. I really do appreciate it, especially given how much I love this album. 
Uh, thank you also. Thank you also for your support. Where, where, where did I reach you? Where are you seated sit, uh, in the States? Uh, no, the website is based in the States. I'm in England. Ah, uh, you're in England. Okay. Yeah. I thought I'm calling to the States. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> However. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. Thank you very much for your support. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Shun, and uh, good night. Good night. <laughs> yes. Good night. Yeah, but I, I still have a thread to go. <laughs> a few more interviews to do so yeah. <laughs> that's no good night right now <laughs> however <laughs> thank you very much baby all the best mate yes same for you